This is a royal knife fish. If you're a monster fish keeper or you're into rare and exotic aquarium fish, I'm sure you've heard of a clown knife fish before. But unless you're a true fish nerd, like I am, I'm almost willing to bet that you've never heard of what I consider to be the king of all knife fish, the royal knife fish. Welcome back to Obsidian Exotics, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about my favorite knife fish, the Royal Knife Fish. Now, even though I'm mainly focusing on the Royal Knife Fish in this video, this will also act as a care guide for the Clown Knife Fish as well, given the fact that they're very similar in behavior and care requirements. So this is how it's going to work. First of all, I'm going to run you through all the basic stats, like water parameters, tank mates, tank requirements, diet, everything else you need to know. And once I've run through all that, I'll tell you everything I've learned through my years of keeping these fish and any tips and tricks I've learned along the way. So if you can go ahead and gently smash that like button, I'll stop talking nonsense and get straight to the video. Alright, so the Royal Knife Fish is a ray fin fish native to the Mekong River. It's a large growing nocturnal predator that preys on small fish in fast flowing regions of the river. More specifically areas with a lot of driftwood and submerged rocks. And just like the more common clown knife fish, these guys can get up to 48 inches in length in the wild. Now in captivity, they'll get close to around 36 inches, rarely exceeding that. So given how big these guys can get, I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than an 8 foot long aquarium that's at least 3 foot in width for an adult fish. Now the height of the aquarium doesn't really matter as much, but I'd recommend a minimum of about 2 foot. This would mean the total volume would equal to around 1300 litres for a full grown adult fish. That's around 300 gallons for all you Americans out there. In terms of water parameters, these guys are very hardy and highly adaptable. Again, very similar to the clown knife fish, which have sort of taken over America at the moment. Especially areas like Florida, where they've taken over the waterways and creeks. You'll see heaps of YouTube videos of people catching these monster clown knife fish in their local creek. Ideally, these guys prefer a pH anywhere from 6.5 all the way up to 7.5. And in terms of temperature, they'll be comfortable anywhere from 24 degrees all the way up to 30 degrees. And in terms of general hardness, these guys prefer slightly harder water with a range of 8 to 12 degrees of general hardness. Now having said that, they can easily adapt to softer water as well. In terms of tank mates, now given the fact that they're highly predatory towards small fish, they actually surprisingly seem to do perfectly fine with anything that can't fit in their mouth. And you can also often find them being kept with other monster fish like red-tailed catfish or arowanas without any issues. Like most predators though, they don't seem to like other fish that look similar to them or other knife fish. And don't let their relatively small mouth or the weird shape fool you, these guys can actually do some serious damage to all their tank mates if they decide they don't like them. In terms of diet, these guys should be fed something primarily high in protein, something like prawns, fish, or even a high protein pellet. Having said that though, these guys can be very tricky when it comes to getting onto new foods and getting them off of live food, which they generally tend to prefer, especially compared to the clown knife fish, which can be a little bit easier to get onto other foods. Last but not least, the price. Now the price can vary from country to country, here in Australia where I am, these guys can actually be worth crazy amounts of money. They can be anywhere from $2,500 all the way up to $3,000 per fish. In comparison, a standard clown knife fish can be anywhere from $1,500 to $1,800. Alright, so that's all the basics out of the way. Let's get into what I've learned personally through my years of keeping these amazing fish. Now over the last 4-5 to five years, I've been lucky enough to keep 6 royal knife fish and nearly 20 different types of clown knife fish from albinos to gold to standards. So I think it's fair to say that I've learned a thing or two about keeping these fish alive and healthy. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is any common issues that you may run into when keeping a royal knife fish. Now I've personally found that even though that they're a very hardy fish, they're still prone to things like bacterial infections and cloudy eye. Now the main reason for this is because they have very poor eyesight and if something scares them, they tend to just bash into things in the tank. And any damage caused by that can often lead to cloudy eye or other bacterial infections. Now in case you didn't know, most knife fish actually have pretty bad eyesight and they rely on small electrical charges that they generate to use for navigation. Now this is what makes them such an effective nocturnal predator. Anyway, so the best way to deal with this issue is to have plenty of hiding spots so they have somewhere to hide during the day. Also try and avoid having any ornaments that tend to have rough surfaces or sharp edges just in case they tend to run into it when they're scared. I always recommend keeping some general antibiotics like trisulfur just in case 
something happens, then they scratch themselves and you can always treat the fish straight away. That way you can avoid any bacterial infections from happening. Now the next most common issue is internal parasites. Now this usually happens when they're fed a lot of live fish and the live fish tend to have some sort of internal parasite already in them. This is one of the main reasons why I avoid feeding live fish to my predators. Now I understand that this can be a little difficult, especially with royal knife fish and clown knife fish who are very hard to get off live food if they happen to already be on it. Now if this is the case, I highly recommend you treat all your fish every three to six months with an internal parasite medication like Prazi and also whenever you get any new fish added to your system. Which also brings me to my last tip on how I've managed to get all the knife fish I've ever kept onto pellets within the first few months, which also significantly decreases their chances of getting an internal parasite. So when I first got the chance to get a royal knife fish in 2022, I was super excited because this was the first time I'd seen one for sale in over 10 years. Now I was also wondering why this person was selling such a rare fish, especially given the fact that I didn't think there was any left in Australia anymore. So before I purchased it, I asked him a few questions and I found out that the reason he was selling it was only because he couldn't get it off live food. So when I heard that, I was a little concerned, but also still very excited because I wasn't gonna pass up on an opportunity like that because I knew I wanted to have that in the collection. So I thought I'd challenge myself and decided to go ahead with the sale. When I first received the fish, it was really healthy and fat. So I knew that it had a massive meal before it got to my plate, which meant that I could starve it for a couple of weeks to try and get it onto a new food. Now, a lot of people don't realize, unlike us, fish can actually last a very long time without food. I've actually seen large fish go multiple months without a single drop of food. So there's no harm in starving a perfectly healthy fish just to get it onto a better food source. Now even though I was starving the royal knife fish in that tank, I still had other fish in there that I was feeding regularly. I found that having some medium sized schooling fish like some silver dollars, or in my case some flag tails, significantly increased the chances of the royal knife fish swapping over to a new food. Something about watching all the other fish having a feeding frenzy seems to activate some sort of natural instinct which causes them to want to eat so they don't miss out on the food. Now using this method I was able to get my royal knife fish onto blackworms within the first week and a couple weeks later I managed to get him onto prawns. So basically what I would do is get him onto a new food and then let him eat that food for a few weeks once he's stable on that food, I'll then starve him again for a couple more weeks and then try a different food. After repeating this cycle with multiple different foods, within about two months time, I managed to finally get him on pellets and he's been on pellets ever since. Since then, I've actually recently been able to find five more baby royal knife fish, two of which I sold to a customer of mine and three of which I'm currently growing out at the moment. I'm hoping that eventually I can put them all together and possibly try and breed them in the future. But I'm happy to say they're all eating pellets and doing really, really well. So I guess that wraps up everything you need to know about the Royal Knife Fish. Now, if there's anything you wanna know that I forgot to mention in the video, feel free to comment down below and I'll be sure to answer your questions. Now, if you enjoy this type of content and you'd like me to make more of these care guide type videos, feel free to comment down below on what fish I should do next. And don't be shy, you can subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you so much for all your support and I guess I'll see you in the next one.